Okay, so today I want to talk about this small arcade machine called Tinycade and it's based on the Arduino on the AT Tiny 85 chip, which is one of the simplest and smallest Arduino compatible chip. You can also probably tell that the AT Tiny is the reason for the name being the Tinycade, you know, AT Tiny Arcade. But when you search for it, you will find out that the Tinycade is actually already another project for creating an arcade machine using just your phone and some paper. Anyway, back to our project. So besides having the AT Tiny chip, there is this OLED display. This is the SSD 130628x64pixel i2c OLED display. I believe the size is 0.9 inch and I can tell you that because I have a lot of those displays laying around, including this one, which will probably look better with this black PCB. You also have three buttons, the buzzer and blue LED. Now, I don't believe the LED is connected to the microcontroller and that's just because this AT Tiny chip only has eight pins. Two are used for the power supply. Two pins are used for the OLED screen for the I2C connection, three pins are used for the individual buttons and one pin is used for the buzzer. So it's two, three, four, five, six, so all the pins are being used. And you can find a pin out on the back of the PCB. There is also a battery holder in here because this whole device is powered with a single cell battery. Now you can get this tiny kate as a soldering kit to practice your soldering. But since I don't like soldering, I did get a pre-soldered kit, which might not be the best option. And I will tell you why in a minute. As an extra option, you can also get those colorful buttons as well as the acrylic case. If I turn it on using this big switch, you can see that there is already some game preloaded. And I can use those three buttons to play the game. By the way, if you think that the buzzer sound is annoying, you can just remove this jumper pin to disconnect it. So once you play this game for a few minutes, you probably want to try a different game. And here comes the problem, because if you want to upload a new game, you have to access those pins on the AT Tiny 85 chip. And while there is this ISP header on the back of the PCB, it's hidden behind this acrylic shield. And unfortunately, it's also not soldered. And to make things even more complicated, those pins are placed below the OLED display. So I guess I would have to do some soldering anyway. So this is how the board looks like after soldering those pins. And I also purchased a programmer. This is called a Tiny ISP for Arduino. And the nice thing is that the pins on the programmer are matching the pins on the Tinycade board. So I've decided to solder it directly to the board, which was a mistake. And it was a mistake because I don't know how, but somehow I managed to solder it upside down. I guess I was trying to match the square pins, but they shouldn't be connected. Anyway, after soldering it in the wrong direction and powering it with USB, I've seen a magic smoke. And so while waiting for a new programmer to arrive, I've decided to try those games inside a browser. In my last video, I've showed you that you can simulate a project with the AT Tiny 85 chip using the Walkway Online Emulator by going to the Arduino section and creating a new project with the AT Tiny 85. But I haven't told you that you can actually run hex files on this emulator. So if I open the GitHub for the Tiny Kid project, there is a folder with all the hex files with the individual games. So I'll go back and download this as a zip file and then jump back to Walkway, press F1 and type in hex for load hex file and start simulation and it will tell you that this has been renamed to upload firmware and start simulation. So once again, press F1 and upload firmware and start simulation and select one of those hex files, for example, space attack, open the file and it's now actually running, but there is nothing connected to the AT Tiny 85. Let's open the image of the PCB and let's start by connecting the display. I will stop the simulation and click the plus icon and edit the SSD 1306 OLED display and connect it based on the labels on the PCB. So the SDA should go to pin PB3. PB3 is this pin, so SDA goes to pin PB3. And the SCL, the clock, should go to pin PB4. So SCL will go to pin PB4. And then of course VCC will go to 5 volts, so VCC and ground should go to ground. And if I click to start the simulation, I still don't see anything. And that's because by starting the simulation, I'm writing this code. But I want to run our hex file, so I'll press the F1 again, select the upload firmware, select the hex file and open it again. And now we should hopefully see something on the display. That said, we don't have any way how to control the game because we don't have our buttons connected. So let's connect those as well. I will stop the simulation, click the plus icon and add the push button. And I will actually copy it two more times. Now the connection for the buttons is also listed on the PCB. It shows that the left one is connected to PB0. So the left one goes to PB0. 
the right one goes to PB2, like this, and finally the fire goes to PB5. Now for the buttons, we need to connect them to something, either to ground or to 5 volts, and judging by the PCB layout, I think that those are connected to ground by default, and when you press the button, it should connect to 5 volts. And so when you press the button, you connect those short legs, so this pin should be connected to 5 volts, so I'll connect all those 3 pins together, and then connect them to 5 volts, and maybe change the colors of the wires so we can see what's going on, so those are all connected to 5 volts, and when the buttons are not being pressed, there should be a pull down resistor, so I'll add the resistor for every button and I connect the connection between the button and the resistor and all those connections should go to ground so I will just connect this to ground as well and again change the color of the wires what I can also do is go to diagram.json file and for those individual buttons I can add a new property called label and name those buttons accordingly so this is left button the second one will be right button and the last one is fire button I can also select those buttons and assign a shortcut so maybe this will be the left arrow key this will be the arrow right key and this one for example arrow up or maybe the enter or space now I think that the buzzer sound is annoying but since Voke actually supports one let's edit this as well so the buzzer should be connected to pin PB1 that's the last pin that's not being used and the ground should also go to ground let's last time change the wire colors and then we can load our hex file again so F1 upload firmware and select the hex file and now when I press the left or right key I should be able to move this whatever it is like spaceship and shoot the aliens now I think it's shooting all the time so the fire key is actually not being used so now when we have everything ready for the simulation let's also try the other games the first game called Bad Bonanza is a pong game when you press the left key it will move your pedal to the top and when you not press anything it will automatically go back down so you can actually play it with just one button but when you press the right key you can switch between different difficulty levels which means that the ball will now move much faster and it's actually quite fun to play it on the tough mode or the expert mode the next game is called frogger where you should cross the road with your frog without being smashed by the car or drowning in the river and I guess this is some kind of poison river because I thought that frogs know how to swim. Anyway, I really like this game because it's fun to play and it looks nice. But it looks like that the left and right buttons do nothing, I can only press the fire button to go up and I cannot move left or right. This makes the game a little bit more challenging, but I'm not quite sure if that was the intention. The next game is not really a game, but a Morse alphabet decoder. And it took me a few tries to get some characters recognized. Actually, it took me quite so many tries to get the SOS message being displayed. Yep, let's move on. The next game is Pac-Man, and it's pretty much what you might expect from a game called Pac-Man. In this case, the buzzer sound is really annoying, so let's just turn it off for a second. The left and right buttons switch the direction where the Pac-Man is moving, but with just two buttons for four directions, it's not very easy to play. But still, I like the graphics quite a lot. Next on the list is a game called Roller Coaster, and thankfully the annoying sound is only during the intro animation. That said, I'm not quite sure if I understand how to actually play this game. Some kind of bird is moving and sometimes jumping, but again, yeah, I don't know how to play it. If I don't count the space attack, which is something that I've already played on the real Tiny Kate, the last game is a classic Tetris. You use the left button to move the position, and the right button to rotate the piece. The fire button does nothing, but you can press and hold the right button to speed things up. You can also probably see that this game is for the portrait display orientation, and we can simulate this in Vokwe as well. I can stop the simulation and then select the display, and rotate it using the R key on the keyboard, like so. Make sure there are no wires going over the display, and let's run it again. And now it should be in the correct orientation. This is also a very nice game, and I like it a lot. So we've seen all the games and I think it's time to also test it on the real tiny Kate. Just because I have a new programmer and hopefully this time I will connect it in the correct orientation. But before doing so we need to install the drivers. And for me the ones from Adafruit are working just fine. You can find the link down in the description of this video. So once I proceed to the next step we want to install those ones for the USB tiny ESP. But somehow the programmer was still not working and I realized that there is this SJFAB connection being soldered that wasn't soldered on the old one, the one that was working before I fried it. And it turned out that that was a missing piece of the puzzle. I believe that when the connection is soldered you can program the actual chip on the board. But we don't want to do that, we want to use this chip to program another chip, in this case the 80 tiny 85 
So I've desoldered the disconnection and started the application AVR Dudes, which could be used to upload hex files to the Arduino boards. In here, select our programmer being the USB Tiny ESP, and you don't actually need to select anything else. And then after clicking the detect button, our AT Tiny 85 chip is finally recognized. Which means that we can now select our hex file that should be uploaded to the flash memory. And let's for example use this Frogger game. The blue line shows a memory usage and it looks like that it will fit just fine. So we can go on and click the program button. And that will upload the content of the hex file into the flash memory of our AT Tiny 85 chip using the USB Tiny ESP programmer. Now I should mention that I can also use the Arduino Uno as a programmer, I don't need a separate programmer, but I wanted to try something different today. So after it writes all the data, it also reads all the data, just to make sure that everything was written properly. And as you can see, it took around 20 seconds. And now we can play the Frogger game on the Tiny Kate. And somehow the left and right buttons are actually working on the Tiny Kate. So I wonder if I have something connected wrong on the walkway emulator. I don't know. If you have any ideas, please let me know in the comment section. Anyway, I cannot end the video right now because I wanted to create my own game, but let's do some simplest possible sketch instead. We should have everything connected on Wokwi, and the last time I was using the AT Tiny 85 chip with the OLED display, I was using the SSD 1306X LED library. But there is something that we haven't discussed yet. You can see that the SDA is connected to pin PB0, and the SCL is connected to pin PB2, which I believe are the hardware I2C pins for the AT Tiny 85 chip. But when you compare it with our connection, now the SDA is connected to pin PB3 and the SCL is connected to pin PB4. So I believe that for the tiny gate, we would need to use software I2C connection. So today I will be using the U8G2 library, actually a version of the U8G2 library called U8x8, which is for small microcontrollers, and it doesn't have any buffer. So I'll go to source code and try to find some examples. So Arduino, U8x8, and there should be this hello world sketch. So I'll open the Inno file and copy the content into the clipboard and paste it into our sketch on Wokwe. Now the most important thing is to select the right constructor and you can see we have a lot of displays to choose from. I will search for SSD 1306 which is our display, 128 by 64 pixels. And again we are looking for some software i 2 c connection. So I guess this one might work. So I'll uncomment this one and just delete everything else. I don't need the SPI and I don't need those comments, so that will simplify our sketch a lot. We need to set the correct pins, so the SCL, the clock goes to pin 4, so SCL, clock goes to pin 4, and the data goes to pin 3. And we also need to add this library to our sketch, so go to Library Manager, click the plus icon and type in U8G2 and add this one. And then we can try to run it. And we should see the hello world message as well as some numbers being drawn on the display. Let's simplify this even a little bit more by just drawing this string hello world maybe a little bit more centered on the display, like so. And let's try one more thing and that is drawing the image. Now the U8x8 library, as the name suggests, splits the display into individual tiles being sized 8x8 pixels, and so our image also has to be in the multiplies of 8. So inside Photopy, I've created the image sized 24x8 pixels, and then just draw some content and save it as a PNG file, file export as PNG file, and then use the image to CPP website to convert this image into the C style array. So select the image, scroll down and make sure that the draw mode is set to vertical, generate code and copy the output and paste the code in our sketch. I don't need this helper array so I can delete it, but I need to do few things to this array. The U8x8 library is not using images from the program memory, so I'll delete the program as well as the constant. And then inside the documentation, I'm looking for a draw tile function. And down here, there is an example of defining the tile and then drawing the tile. So I'll just copy this example of the draw tile. And first we need to set the X and Y position as a multiplies of eight and then the number of tiles and the actual tile. So back in our project, let's just set some random numbers for the position. So for example, position X will be six, position Y five. And because our image has the width of 24 pixels, we are using three tiles and the name should of course be this name. So I'll just copy this one and restart the simulation. And as you can see, we have both the hello world message as well as a small image. So the one last step will be running this on the tiny gate. And I don't actually need to go into the Arduino IDE this time. I can just generate the hex file from this sketch and then upload the hex file to the AT Tiny 85 chip. Now to generate the hex file, I will press the F1 in the source code and select the download compiled firmware option. And that will download me the hex file. Then I can go back to the AVR Dudes application and select that hex file. 
I rename it to hello world.hex and once again click the program button. And once this is done, I should see the very same sketch running on the real Arduino on the real OLED display. And while this is not a game, I think it's a great first step in developing my own game, which will be a topic for a next video, hopefully soon. In the meantime, please feel free to watch my other video using the AT Tiny 85 chip together with the OLED display. As usual, all the source files are placed on GitHub, the link is in the description. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.